the Model 3 is now 3 years old, and although Tesla has improved it over time, they have taken some things to the next level with the Model Y. So, let me show you 5 things on which the Model Y is better than the Model 3. You're watching On Forward. Since the Model 3 came out, Tesla hasn't stopped working on making it a better car. We've seen many software and hardware updates, which further improve the product. But the Model Y has some features that the Model 3 doesn't include, and probably never will. At the end, I also included one aspect where the Model Y is worse than the Model 3. So stay until the end to find out. Let's start. At number 5, we have the range of the Model Y. Let's compare it with the Model 3's range. As you can see, the difference is very subtle, especially in the non-performance versions, which is the one I think most customers will go for, because if you buy a Model Y in the first place, you are already prioritizing utility over performance. The fact that these ranges are so close is impressive, because the Model Y is bigger and heavier than the Model 3. So Tesla probably has been working a lot to make the range on this car appealing. One thing that we're sure about is that the heat pump present on the Model Y improves the range of the car by a lot in colder climates, being a much more efficient approach to heating up the car. At number 4, we have something a lot of drivers want in their cars. We are talking about the tow hitch. On 2019, Tesla made available a tow hitch for the Model 3, but currently it is only for Europe, so Model 3 owners in the US have to install aftermarket options, which is not ideal. But one month after the Model Y delivery started, Tesla included an option for a tow hitch, which is available in North America and Europe. Also, the one present in the Model 3 is rated for £2,000, while the tow hitch for the Model Y is rated for £3,500. With the tow hitch and the roof rack, the utility of the Model Y becomes very compelling. For number 3, I picked the off-road assist mode, which is something I didn't see coming. It is supposed to enable the Model Y to transit some roads that are rougher than pavement. And although this is an improvement over the Model 3, please notice I said roads. What I mean is that the Model Y is definitely not capable of real off-roading, because neither the 6.6 inch ground clearance nor the limited suspension travel allow this. But this is not bad. For example, with this mode, Model Y drivers could transit their roads more confidently, and also this will provide Tesla with useful data for the Cybertruck, which surely will be capable of going over rough terrains. At number 2, we have the superior cargo space. Being a bigger car overall has its drawbacks, but one big benefit is its pretty large cargo space. Comparing both cars at full capacity, this means with the back seats folded down, and also including the front, the Model 3 has 43 cubic feet of maximum cargo space, while the Model Y has 68 cubic feet. This is an increase of more than 50%. Also, the hatchback style offers much more comfort when loading or unloading stuff because of the larger opening and the included power lift gate. This is definitely its biggest advantage over the Model 3 in my opinion. For number 1, I picked something that customers didn't expect, and wasn't even necessary to be honest, but it provides a more premium experience when traveling. I'm talking about the panoramic glass roof. Until the Model Y came out, the only model which had a panoramic glass roof was the Model S, which is a premium car. The Model 3 has a glass roof, but it also has a bar between the side pillars which obstructs the view. On the other side, Tesla has included a glass roof on the Model Y that covers the entirety of the top of the car, without any bars in the middle. 
This results in excellent views and a much more premium feel, just like the Model S, but for a cheaper price. If you're worried about the strength of the glass roofs present in Teslas, take a look at this video I made, in which I talk about the safety of Tesla vehicles in general, obviously exploring the resistance of the glass roof. Just a little reminder before talking about the aspect where the Model Y falls short. If you enjoy this content, consider subscribing so you don't miss out on new videos. With that out of the way, let's go for one thing the Model Y does worse than the Model 3, and that is the rear window visibility. According to some customers, the rear visibility of the Model 3 was already a little poor compared to other sedans. Take into account that besides some exceptions, most SUVs have worse visibility than sedans, so it is no surprise that the Model Y's rear visibility is really inferior. Luckily, there's a workaround. You can watch the rear camera's feed on the screen at all times, but this is obviously far from ideal, as everything on the car is controlled by this screen and also navigation is shown here, so having to keep it occupied by the rear camera's feed isn't optimal. The Model Y has improved on various aspects over the Model 3 and offer a different option for customers whose priorities are comfort, utility and space. It obviously has its trade-offs as everything does, but they are reasonable and none of them are deal breakers in my opinion. In general, it is a much better option if we talk about utility over performance and it's a nice fit for most families. As a side note, don't think this car performs badly, it's just that the Model 3 is better, but the Model Y would smoke all of its competitors in a drag race. Just look at the performance version, it goes from 0 to 60 in 3.3 seconds, that's incredible for any car, moreover for an SUV. Thank you a lot for watching all the way through, here are two more videos that you may like, see you soon.